Good day, honors biology students. Welcome to video lecture, episode eight. Today, we're gonna to continue working our way through section two of chapter 11. Now, when we finished last, we were talking about blood groups in humans. Well, we're gonna just uh, quickly touch on that a little bit more and then move into some other topics in relation to that. All right, looking at slide 32, we see that the RH factor is named after the rhesus monkey, which is on slide 32 in the image there. And that's where it was discovered in that animal, and that's why they have named it the RH factor. Now, the RH factor is a blood protein. Now, if we look at slide 33, we actually see the compatibility of blood cells, and we can see those who donate and who they can donate to versus those who can receive. And where you see the green checks, obviously, that means the, that it can, that actually can transfer the blood. And that's why it's important knowing your blood type, especially if you ever need to get a transfusion. Now, slide 34 just gives you some statistics on the distribution of blood types and the percentages. Uh, slide 35 shows you the distribution of blood, uh, blood type uh, O negative throughout the world, which is pretty cool, I thought. Uh, slide 36 just has a graph just um, further explaining and uh, in a graphical manner uh, blood types A, B, A, B, and O. Now let's move to slide 37. Let's talk about code of color of rabbits in connection with multiple alleles. Multiple alleles can demonstrate a hierarchy of dominance, as we will see with the coat color of rabbits. For rabbits, there are four alleles for coat color. They are capital C, capital C with a superscript of CH, lowercase c with a, with a superscript of H, and then lowercase c. Now let's move on and let's discuss this a little more. Capital C is dominant to the other three alleles and results in a full coat color. Okay, the lowercase c allele is recessive and results in an albino phenotype. Now, if you look at the image on slide 38, you can see what I mean by that, the albino uh, rabbit is. In that image, it's in the top left-hand corner, and if you notice, it's got the white uh, fur, but it has the red eye, and then the full coat has the black fur, and then you can see the chinchilla and the other one, the Himalayan one there, which is the other uh, varieties within that allele. Let's just continue this discussion and move into it. We just got two more slides on this. Uh, slide 39 says allele, allele capital C superscript CH is dominant to, to lowercase c uh, superscript H and c, uh, lowercase c superscript H is dominant to lowercase c. So the hierarchy goes as follows. Capital C, capital C with a superscript of CH, lowercase c with a superscript of H, and then lowercase c. Moving to slide 40, let's uh, close up our discussion on coat color of rabbits. Uh, this image that is similar, that is from your textbook, figure 11.7, exhibits the genotypes and phenotypes for all possible rabbit coat color. The presence of multiple alleles increases the number of genotypes and phenotypes. All right, so let's move into another topic, and that is epistasis. Uh, what is epistasis? Epistasis is one allele hiding the effect of another allele. Now, I just put a visual image on slide 41 to illustrate this, and we'll continue with that. Now, we'll talk about an example here, and that's uh, with dogs. This actually occurs in Labrador Retrievers. Their coat color can vary from yellow to black, and this is because of two sets of alleles which control it. Now, the dominant allele in the color of the, there is capital E, which determines if the fur will have a dark pigment. The dominant capital B alleles determine how dark the pigment will be. If the dog has the genotype lowercase e, lowercase e, it will not have any pigment. You can see that in the image on slide 43 on the right hand side. Now, if the dog has the genotype, like I said, little e, little e, it will not have any pigment. Now, the possible phenotypes are seen in that image, figure 11.8, which is on slide 43. Now, just one other thing I want to mention with epistasis, just in connection with the laboratory dogs. Notice the dog with the phenotype lowercase ee, -E, capital B, with an underscore line. The allele E, the lowercase e, is masking the effect of the dominant allele, the capital B. Pretty interesting when you think about it there. Now let's go ahead and wrap up our discussion today talking about sex determination. Okay, Starting on slide 45, and we'll go through 47 and finish today. Minus the gametes, every cell in our body has 46 chromosomes, that is 23 pairs. One of those pairs of chromosomes are sex chromosomes. Sex chromosomes determine an individual's gender. All right. There are only two sex chromosomes. There's X and there's Y. An individual with XX is a female, and an individual with a XY is a male. The sex chromosomes are in the sperm and egg. Now, if you look at figure 11.9, which is on slide 46, it illustrates this. And if you notice, it's in a Punnett square, so you can see the probability that it's either going to be XX or XY is the only uh, options from based on the genetics are there. 
Now, if we look at slide 47 we're going to close today, if you look that that one pair we talked about, the sex uh, chromosomes, is one pair. The other 22 pairs are what we call autosomes, and that refers just to body cells. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're done for this day's lecture. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I hope this was helpful. Have a nice day. Goodbye.